Hey guys, welcome back to another More With Mars video. Today's video is going to be an extreme garage storage and DIY project, as well as a garage organizational video. We are actually going to do this voiceover together because this was a project that we both kind of worked on. I have to give majority of the credit to Frank though because he put a lot of time and effort into making the shelves. But I have no idea what any of this is, so I'm gonna let him explain everything that you will need for this project. So some of the materials you'll need for this DIY project are 2x4s, some sheets of plywood, and I use some decking screws along with some nails to hold down the plywood to the 2x4s. So you're going to take your 2x4s and you're going to make your frame out of it and then with the plywood or OSB that you get, you can use that as the actual shelving part, the top layer. That way you have a nice sturdy base to put anything that you're wanting to put on there and we ended up using storage containers. So these are some of the screws that I bought for the inside part of the framework and they are 2 inch pocket hole screws. Also to make this project a lot easier for you guys, I'll leave a list of everything that I used in the description below. So I started out with taking everything from the back of the garage and then cleaning up just a little bit. And then from there I removed all of the overhead storage that I had previously put up. Now this new storage system that I am putting in will take up a little bit more space, but it will give you plenty of storage for anything you decide to put up there. Following our hearts at them, we take a ride wherever. I always try to let my spirit fly, fly away. That's the only way to get that high. So for the start of the project, what I ended up doing was taking my stud finder and marking all of the studs on this back wall. And I also measured this wall because I knew it was going to be a little bit shorter than the 2x4s and the plywood that I had. So it ended up being around six and a half feet. And then from there, I marked all the studs and made a nice clean line all the way across that was nice and straight. And I spaced them out at about three feet. But what I ended up doing was coming back in and changing that up a little bit. That way I had two feet of storage in the middle and three feet at the top and at the bottom. So here what I'm doing is marking every board at 21 inches, that way I had a nice base of 24 overall inches which is about 2 feet. And what I ended up doing, which I have seen this in a couple of previous videos, is taking your square and lining it up with your saw and what that does is it gives you a nice clean straight line every single time. I also wanted to mention that the cuts that I am making that are 21 inches are going to be for the inside part of your frame and those will be what you will use your Craig jig for or your pocket hole jig for that way it makes nice clean lines on the outside and you don't have screws from the outside to the inside of the board. 
cute. All right, so I'm going to interject for a second because all of this sounds like foreign language. Like, I don't even understand it. So if you are watching this right now and you have no idea what Frank is talking about, pause, show your husband, boyfriend, dad, whoever who's really good with tools, show them this video so that they will be able to understand it and help you make your own garage shelf. And I was just thinking this doesn't necessarily have to be just for garage. If you have a basement, in the south it's not really common to have basements but I know up in the north it is you could even do this for your basement if we had a basement we would probably do it for, for oh, that yeah, for sure and then what I'm doing here is I'm taking all of my pre-cut 2x4s and mounting them to all of the studs that way I have a nice solid base to start working out of and what I ended up doing from here is using my Craig jig to make the pocket holes on the uh, smaller two by fours and and you can kind of see right here I'm cutting some more pieces for the inside um, so I ended up using those pieces to form my frame and it made it a lot easier when you had that first board up and you could just take those screws and screw them right into the two by four and everything was already nice and level so I know this is probably already common sense but I just wanted to say that because I didn't want anybody to do the exact measurements that Frank is doing but of course before getting started with this project you want to be able to measure the space that you are going to be putting your shelvings on shelvings shelving shelving on we want to measure that and actually we might even be making this longer we realized after we made these shelves we might even be extending it so just be aware of that make sure you know your exact measurements so what I ended up doing you guys with these pocket holes is I set that into the wall and now our I have said this in previous videos our walls are not straight they are probably more crooked than anything I've ever seen in my life. But what I ended up doing on that opposite side was using two of those decking screws and mounting that part of the frame to the wall as well. And I, yeah, you can kind of see them right here. And what that ended up doing was making everything perfectly level and it made it actually a lot stronger. And also you guys, I just wanted to mention that I also added uh, like some sub framing on the inside of the outer frame. And what that ended up doing was adding a lot more support to the existing frame itself. That way, whenever you put your OSB on it, you don't have that sag in the middle. What is an OSB? <laughs> it's just the like plywood? plywood. Okay. See, this is what I'm talking about. We need like a chart in the description. Like this equals this. This is what this translates into. I'm just like, that's a two by four, and then you put plywood on it, and then yeah, you're done. Now, there was a lot more <laughs> stuff that went into it instead of just saying, yeah, let's just put some wood up here and go with it. No, I know that it's more, I know that, it, I understand that it's more complex than that. You have to do the framework, you have to do the measurements, you have to have the support, you have to make sure it's secure, like there's a lot that goes into it. And you also had to make sure everything was nice and level. Yeah, that's another thing, because if it's not level, you're going to have uneven wood. The plywood is going to be very uneven once you put it on the shelf. So now you can sit back and relax and enjoy this time lapse of me doing the exact same thing for the other shelves. You share your love so easily Still I'm insecure I hear all the things you don't say So I can be sure But here we go again, go again Do my best to pretend, to pretend Yeah, here we go again, go again Do my best to pretend, to pretend
So I wanted to take a quick second and show you guys this awesome tool that I bought from Lowe's. It is called a rip cut from the Craig Jig Company. And what that ended up doing was making everything perfectly square. And if you're sawing something, you guys probably know that if you don't have it perfectly square, you're going to mess that board so Badly. much. Like it's going to be so bad. It's going to be crooked and you're not going to have a straight line. And for these shelves, that's what you want is like a perfectly straight line. That way everything is nice and square. And also you guys, like I mentioned that I made these a little bit shorter. So I ended up having to go back in and take off a little over a foot. So I also ended up using two inch deck screws for the plywood so I could secure the plywood to the two by fours. Now I did kind of mess up a little bit here um, and I found out later that it is a lot easier to get those screws in if you pre-drill a small hole in them because I don't know if it was just the type of screw that I was using or the plywood. It was really difficult to get those screws to get started. So once I started pre-drilling all the holes, it made everything go 10 times easier. And if it's not enough, I want to see the stuff the world has got in store. Uh, I want to take it on it. I'm falling. So I want to mention that I also added a end support for the shelves because that side obviously was not um, secured by the other side of the wall or like seated into more two by fours. So to make it nice and sturdy, I ended up putting a two by four support and it made it really, really strong, strong enough to where I could actually stand on it. So for the second part of the shelves, I ended up using the true uh, length of, see, I'm laughing. I didn't notice that until now. <laughs> Cause it's weird, ain't it? All right, you guys. I'm just staring at Frank's ass this whole video. It's okay. So for the next part of the project, I ended up using the true dimension of like the whole eight feet of the two by fours. And what I ended up having to do at the top because our builder decided to put yeah, what is that? some type of electrical outlet box right there. I ended up having to cut some of the pieces in half and then level it back out and make sure that it come out to the exact eight feet. So basically you're doing the same thing to this wall as you do the other wall, just a tad longer. Yes, and it was actually a lot quicker to do this other wall. Why? Because you knew how to do it. Because I already knew how to do it, <laughs> and uh, one, I wasn't having to make as many cuts <laughs> as I did before. Like, with the OSB, I could just cut it straight down the middle and put them on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it made true. it so much easier. So to maximize the amount of space and for storage purposes, what I ended up doing was building the second set of shelves off of the first set. And I did that because I didn't want to lose any space. I didn't want to lose that two feet of space. And with doing so, it made it a lot sturdier as well because it was already seated into those two by fours on the other side where the original set of shelves are. Life show seven spoken real saw the movie I ignored Blue sky sound of broken sea and I'm stuck up on the shore I never thought you could see me but you did All I know is we're here that they took us somewhere So what they say we're Yeah. 
And the hardest part of this whole project was making sure that the ends were level. Now, I say that in loose terms because it was hard because it was one person trying to make everything level, pick up on the shelf itself, and then push the screw into the 2x4 to make everything nice and level. And I think I had to take it back out. And if you guys saw before, I did help a little bit with that process. You did. You made it a lot easier, especially <laughs> for kidding. like the bottom. And I even threw Aria in the mix and told Aria to hold the bottom shelf. Oh my gosh. Was that in the video? I don't even remember no, seeing that. No, it wasn't that. in the video. Oh my gosh. And then it just, this is like the cleanup aftermath of the shelves. All the wood dust. And I think we tracked that in our house for days. And I know Days. I'm going to get so many questions about why I cut everything in the garage. I'm honestly, I didn't even just think about because that. I was lazy I and didn't want to take it outside. Convenient. <laughs> and it was very convenient to turn around and just cut something and then put it right up to the wall. And what really made me the happiest of this whole project was the kids. When they come outside, they were like, I want to clean. Let's do the vacuum. And Nolan's thing is he always wants to vacuum the garage floor. Mm -hmm. So he was like, let me vacuum, let me vacuum. So I got all the kids to do it. See, you make a mess and you just have the kids clean it up. Make it fun. It's perfect. So here comes the fun part with adding all of our storage bins. Actually, I would say probably half of these storage bins came from underneath the stairs. We have like a little storage closet. So I really love that we have these shelves now because that's going to clear up a lot, of, a lot of space underneath there. But I want to say we rearranged these bins at least, and I'm saying at least 20 times. Yeah, because right. at first it was like Christmas stuff at top, and then it was like, well, stuff we don't use at the top, and then we worked our way around yeah. it, and now you guys, at the end, you guys will see how we have everything nice and organized by what we don't use, Christmas, Easter, Halloween, fall type of things. Yeah, originally we were just going to do an alphabetical order, I'm like, that doesn't even make any sense because we'll just put the stuff, we'll rotate the boxes as we use them. This is where my specialty comes in with organizing everything in the bins. We did have to buy some more bins to put a lot of the stuff that was already in the garage into them. So just be prepared if you have a lot of crap like us, prepared to be buying a lot of storage bins. But I organized it between swimming stuff, sandcastle things, summer activities, Frank did his stuff, I don't know what this stuff, golf stuff, miscellaneous. miscellaneous. <laughs> so he organized everything like the paint and just made sure that everything had its own bin. There was a couple boxes where we just had to label them miscellaneous because we didn't even know what to do with them. Um, but like I said, we had to rearrange this so many times to get it right. And I think I'm very pleased with where it's at now. I feel like it's at a good place, right? With it all really the is stuff. because like at the end of it, we still have a little bit of storage left. Yeah. But if you think about it, all the stuff that we were able to put up onto these shelves and even though like we could kind of come back in and we can hang some stuff on the bottom row of the shelves, mm -hmm. I still feel like we need to add that extra six or seven feet to get side. all of the stuff that we have. I agree. We still have a lot more stuff underneath the stairs, so we probably will add like a little extension to this storage, but I will say we were able to utilize so much on these shelves. And I'm going to talk about these labels because this was like a last minute thing that I decided to do um, while Frank was building the shelves. I was like, why don't we get some labels so we know where everything is. So I actually bought these on Amazon. They are four by five sticker labels and I downloaded a template online. You can just Google label templates and I saved it to the computer uploaded it to PigMonkey and then there I was able to add my text and just label everything on your storage boxes. We had everything from garden, yard stuff, all the way to like gasoline <laughs> for Frank's lawnmower. Uh, so I don't know, I think we printed out about like 30 labels, but 
you can um, just put them in your printer, just like regular printer paper, but it's stickers. And it cleaned everything up it did. Like, very nicely. It made everything this, look really organized. Yeah, this might be a little extra, but at least we can go in there and be like, hey, I need Easter stuff or I need Christmas ornaments. You just look for it, grab it, and you know exactly what's in there. you guys can see the garage looks 10 times cleaner more organized we're able to even more I don't, I don't think we need to store anything else I think we're good we even still even have a storage unit for like our bigger items to storage to storage to store so this is just like the smaller things I think what Frank is the most excited about after this project was that he was able to finally have a clear workspace and a garage tool space and be able to organize all of this stuff because before it was just all over. Here. It was all over the place. This just made everything a lot better. <laughs> it made it so much simpler. And then I also want to point out that even though it did take me a little bit longer to build these shelves, I love them so much. And honestly, it was one of the more simplest things that I have done. Really? It just took a little bit time more consuming. time. It, it took a lot of time because I wanted to make sure everything was perfect. Right, so anytime we need something, just go to the bin, pull it out, grab, take what we need, put it back, and I hope that you guys enjoy this video and give you guys some organization, motivation, and inspiration. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed another More With Moros video. If you guys did, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more cleaning, organization, and DIY projects. We love you guys and we will see you in our next video. And also I hope you guys loved the thumbnail getting because this was fun. Yeah, that'll be a little bit of some loopers. <laughs> Bye guys. Wherever you are <laughs>